Hey guys, Lord Naren White here, the Holy Ghost, the one true God. Back with you with the next video in my series reading Oliver Twist by Charles Dickens. Without further ado, returning to Oliver Twist as read by Lord Naren White. It was piercing cold, too. All was gloomy and black. Not a word was spoken, for the driver had grown sleepy. And Sykes was in no mood to lead him into conversation. Oliver sat huddled together in a corner of the cart, bewildered with alarm and apprehension, and figuring strange objects in the gaunt trees, whose branches waved grimly to and fro, as if in some fantastic joy at the desolation of the scene. As they passed Sunbury Church, the clock struck seven. There was a light in the ferry house window opposite, which streamed across the road and threw into more somber shadow a dark yew tree with graves beneath it. There was a dull sound of falling water not far off, and the leaves of the old dead of the old tree stirred gently in the night wind. It seemed like quiet music for the repose of the dead. Sunbury was passed through, and they came again into the lonely road. Two or three miles more, and the cart stopped. Sykes alighted, took Oliver by the hand, and they once again walked on. They turned into no house at Shepperton, as the weary boy had expected, but still kept walking on in mud and darkness, through gloomy lanes and over cold open waste, until they came within sight of the lights of a town at no great distance. On looking intently forward, Oliver saw that the water was just below them, and that they were coming to the foot of a bridge. Sykes kept straight on, until they were close upon the bridge. They turned suddenly down a bank upon the left. The water, thought Oliver, turning sick with fear. He has brought me to this lonely place to murder me. He was about to throw himself on the ground and make one struggle for his young life, when he saw that they stood before a solitary house or ruinous and decayed. There was a window on each side of the dilapidated entrance and one story above, but no light was visible. The house was dark, dismantled, and the all appearance uninhabited. Sykes, with Oliver's hand still in his, softly approached the low porch and raised the latch the door yielded to the pressure, and they passed in together. Chapter 22 The Burglary Hello! cried a loud, hoarse voice as soon as they set foot in the passage. Don't make such a row, said Sykes, bolting the door. Show a glim, Toby. Aha, my pal, cried the same voice. A glim, Barney, a glim. Show the gentleman in, Barney. Wake up first, if convenient. The speaker appeared to throw a boot jack or some such article at the person he addressed to rouse him from his slumbers, for the noise of a wooden body falling violently was heard and then indistinct muttering as of a man between sleep and awake. Dear, cried the same voice, there's Bill Sykes in the passage with nobody to do the civil to him, and you were sleeping there, as if you took laudanum with your meals, and nothing stronger. Are you any fresher now, or do you want the iron candlestick to wake you thoroughly? A pair of slipshod feet shuffled, hastily across the bare floor of the room as this interrogatory was put, and there issued 
from a door on the right hand first a feeble candle, and next the form of the same individual who has been heretofore described as laboring under the infirmity of speaking through his nose and officiating as waiter at the public house on Saffron Hill. Mr. Sykes, exclaimed Barney, with real or counterfeit joy. Cobide, sir, cobide. Here, you get on first, said Sykes, putting Oliver in front of him. Quicker, or I shall tread upon your heels. Muttering a curse upon his tardiness, Sykes pushed Oliver before him and they entered a low, dark room with a smoky fire, two or three broken chairs, a table, and a very old couch, on which with his legs much higher than his head. A man was reposing at full length, smoking a long clay pipe. He was dressed in a smartly cut, snuff-colored coat, which large, with large brass buttons, an orange neckerchief, a coarse, staring, shawl-patterned waistcoat and drab breeches. Mr. Crackett, for he it was, had no very great quantity of hair, either upon his head or face, but what he had was of a reddish dye and tortured into long corkscrew curls through which he occasionally thrust some very dirty fingers ornamented with large common rings. He was a trifle above the middle size, and apparently rather weak in the legs, but this circumstance by no means detracted from his own admiration of his top boots, which he contemplated in their elevated situation with lively satisfaction. Bill, my boy, said this figure, turning his head towards the door. I'm glad to see you. I was almost afraid. You'd given it up in which case I should have made a personal venture. Hala! Uttering this exclamation in a tone of great surprise, as his eyes rested on Oliver, Mr. Toby Crackett brought himself into a sitting posture and demanded who that was. The boy, only the boy, replied Sykes, drawing a chair towards the fire. What of Mr. Faggot's lads? exclaimed Barney, with a grin. Fagin, eh? exclaimed Toby, looking at Oliver. What an invaluable boy that'll make. For the old lady's pockets and chapels, his mug is affording to him. There, there's enough of that, interposed Sykes, impatiently. And stooping over his recumbent friend, he whispered a few words in his ear, at which Mr. Crackett laughed immensely and honored Oliver with a long stare of astonishment. Now, said Sykes, as he resumed his seat, if you'll give us something to eat and drink while we're waiting, you'll put some heart in us or in me at all events. Sit down by the fire, Yunker, and rest yourself, for you'll have to go out with us again tonight, though not very far off. Oliver looked at Sykes in mute and timid wonder, and drawing a stool to the fire, sat with his aching head upon his hands, scarcely knowing where he was or what was passing around him. Here, said Toby, as the young Jew placed some fragments of food and a bottle upon the table. Success to the crack. He rose to honor the toast, and carefully depositing his empty pipe in a corner, advanced to the table, filled a glass with spirits, and drank off its contents. Mr. Sykes did the same. A drain for the boy, said Toby, half filling a wine glass. Down with it, innocence. Indeed, said Oliver, looking piteously up into the man's face. Indeed, I... And we'll go ahead and stop there for this week. As usual, I want to say thank you for watching.
and I hope you enjoyed. Please like, comment, and subscribe as it greatly helps the channel. Light be with you all. Take care and thanks again.